have you built on rock or sand? Jesus says, Chapter 3, Matthew 7, 24-27 The Parable of the Wise and Unwise Builder In the New Testament, you can read the following parable about a wise and an unwise builder. One built his house upon a rock, and the other on loose sand. A whirlwind came, and a downpour fell. The house on the rock defied both but the house on the sand was ruined. Whoever contemplates this parable from far away must immediately recognize two central suns on the same spot. Who is similar to the wise builder? Certainly that person who has previously come to stand firm by the two known commandments. And when the storms and the massive rains come, they not only do not harm the builder, but instead, they even reinforce his house on the rock, because the winds dry the walls of the house and make it pretty thirsty for humidification. Then the rain comes, and it soaks into the dry walls of the house, dissolves the particles here and there at the joints, which become sticky and splice. And with frequent repetition of such events, they connect the masonry tighter and tighter together. Natural examples of this truth can be found at every old ruin of a castle, which often defies centuries. And if such a thing should ever be demolished, it would be easier to break a fresh rock instead of such a masonry. The reason for this is the rain. With its dissolving power, it transformed certain parts of the stone into chalky gunk, thereby splicing all the masonry together over time. And behold, it is the same with a person who has been awakened by the commandments of love. He or she is a building on a rock. The winds that come and push against the building and make it dry and thirsty are the noble desires, recognizing the author of all things more and more, and by such recognition to grow in one's love towards him. The following downpour are the writings which the thirsty one gets to read, Eagerly he absorbs it, all, and he will thereafter always be aware how, through their influence, the empty, disconnected chasms in him gradually start to fill up, connect, and become one big fortress. And the more rain falls down upon this building, the stronger it will become after every downpour. But the effects of the winds and the downpour for the house which was built in the depths upon the loose sand, are completely different. If the winds come and push against the loose standing building and shake it, and then when the water comes, which the downpour has caused, then this building will have met its end. The winds crush the already scratched walls, whose crevices and cracks are the cause of a bad foundation. Then when the water comes, it will dismantle the building with ease, and pour it into any nearby river of perdition. I mean, this should be clear like a central sun, because a person who does not even have a clue of what spiritual preparation is, has to perish, if his intention is to let the spiritual winds and the spiritual downpour come upon him. To transform him into a steady building, or a spiritually wise person. Give the Bible to a complete worldly or at least semi-worldly person and tell him, Friend, read diligently therein and you'll find what you're missing. A hidden treasure which you always ask for, consisting of gold, silver and precious gems, which is a fulfilled life of your soul. And the friend will follow this advice and acquire a Bible and read in it with great alertness. However, the more ambitious and attentive he will read it, 
the more external contradictions he will encounter, and will soon say to his friend, Friend, I have read that book that you have recommended to me at least six or seven times. But the more I read it though, the more contradictions and nonsense I find. What is it with all this colorful furbelows and these mysterious prophecies that seem to have just as much in common as the Chimborazo in America with the Himalaya in Asia? That these two mountains are located on one and the same earth is clear. So are also similar prophecies in one and the same book, which is clear too. But how these different prophecies are associated with each other, or how the Chimborazo is connected through the center of the earth with the Himalaya in Asia, an earthly naturalist will have a difficult time to detect such a connection, if he still fears the fire and finds a too powerful distinguishing device when he arrives at the waters of the sea because of his still moderate thirst. I can tell you, my dear friend and brother, the first time I read this book, it seemed to me that it has some secret wise meaning. But the more critically and attentive I read it, the more I became convinced that this whole book is nothing more than a giant treasury of utter nonsense. Aside from a few wise sayings, one piece of rubbish follows the next. Aside the few phrases, which in itself are not really of pure gold either, this book is perfectly suitable to entertain the stupid people for a few more centuries on account of its mystical form. From this reasoning, you can infer enough what effect the winds and the rain of the Bible have had on our worldly sand building. If such a person has been destroyed by a sand building, then pick him up, whoever wants to do so. Because I and all my angels see such a task as one of the most difficult ones. And it is easier to get together 10,000 people from all streets and alleyways for the large banquet of life than one single man who went to seek after an ox with his reading of the Bible. Just as it behaves with the reading of the Bible, exactly the same it is with the reading of all of its inner spiritual explanations and interpretations. Because everybody will say, if that is its purpose, then why is it not written like that? And if you give him the reason for their allegory form ever so clearly, he will only laugh in your face and say, After the exploit, one can easily prophesy. Because any nonsense can be twisted and turned like a dough, and one can form it into whatever one wants. Because chaos is the source of all things. After some time, everything can be formed with it. So why not give a prophecy the way it actually happens? The reason is, one cannot know it in advance. That is why one provides a mystical nonsense out of which every exploit can be formed, which will happen in the future. This is the final judgment, which cannot be reversed by even the might and power of a sensual sun. I mean, this will be clear too, but nevertheless, we want to bring together several more sensual suns. Therefore, soon again, another central sun.